Fellow Ambazonians, I am spurred by a strong apprehension and impulse to felicitate your enthusiastic involvement with our independence actualization agenda and our restoration machinery once again. This is not time to give up. Set your face on the prize. Look on Boya, the historic, beautiful capital of our great nation. For that is where we are going. And that is the reason why we fight. See the progressive actualization of a socio-economically and politically vibrant Amazonia, because that is who we are. Do not give up now. Yes, we may not see how fast we are moving, but we are moving and moving forward and faster than every known revolution in modern history. We are making progress in multiple fronts. Ground Zero has become 80% ungovernable and 99% still answerable to our leadership. Bias, torture, burnings, and scare killings notwithstanding. And remember, the darkest hour of the day is just before dawn. I have not just come here today to try to encourage you, but I am your servant with a message to remind the world leaders of our culture of resilience and unrelenting bravery in the face of gross injustice and provocations. Those who think we are going to surrender are woefully mistaken. Do not give up now. Leaders of our God-ordained resistance, please let us, whether on our knees or on our feet, let's keep on moving. We must not succumb to the wishes of so-called federalists and bedfellows of the French Cameroon Mafia, asking us to settle for a made-in-France federalism that will preserve Amazonia as a conquered people. Lest I forget, your interim government is totally against the upcoming Tumi Munzu crusade. For that reason, we will be having a five days lockdown of our territory. Details will be given prior to the set dates of the announced AGC meetings scheduled to take place in our capital city of Boya. If they must have such a, a meeting without us, then they could do that in Douala or Yaoundé and not in Amazonia. We will no longer tolerate any organized provocation that is aimed at enslaving our people any further. It is true, the ongoing genocide and torture and tears may have obscured the vision of some. Fear and pity party politics may have softened the resolve of some, but not the resolve of our valiant forces on ground zero. Hail and brave forces of Amazonia, whether dead or alive, you are the true heroes of our story. Your blood is the full price of Amazonia's sovereignty. We are at the verge of experiencing an exponential change. It may not be a sudden change. Let us prepare our minds. It is going to be a sure, steady, and a progressive change with significant victories where we will grind, we will clench, but the victory, I can assure you, is inevitable. A new foundation stone is here, the Amber Peace Plan. It, it is my singular honor on behalf of your interim government to introduce an initiate the Amber Peace Plan as the new panacea of our country's restoration agenda. Going forward, we will mobilize and secure our counties, local government, 
by local government. This project will lay the foundation for three separate and functional tiers of government and get us prepared to govern ourselves when we land in Boya. The Amber Peace Plan is a premium strategy where we the people are the voice. We make our own valuable decisions, craft our own projects in line with our revolutionary leadership and realize them by ourselves. It is a plan that puts you, the people, in the driver's seat of our liberation struggle. The days when you people were relegated to the rear and government was government by a few are over. This is the era of the people's government based on a genuine partnership between your Amazonian interim federal government and her people. I have instructed the detailed program of the the Amber Peace Plan to be published via our various official platforms and the nation's official website, which are the most reliable sources of information online at this time. Take our time to go through it. I can guarantee that you will be proud of the quality of minds that put this revolutionary solution package together. That's notwithstanding. I understand some counties are already organizing themselves as counties only. There is no problem with that. But I will quickly advise that they immediately segregate their membership, county membership, into local government by local government for maximum mobilization and help to organize chose and present their local government administrators for each local government as executive members of their county structure. If each local government within the county focuses on mobilizing its own people, its residents, its friends and helpers, no local government area shall be left behind in this all-inclusive exercise. The idea is to maximize involvement and grassroots commitment from the very first tier of a community-based government. We expect that every nation in the diaspora should present a representative for each local government by the end of this month of October, 2018. The representatives of the, all the local governments around the world should come together globally and elect the local government executives on or before the 15th of November 2018, who will be the legitimate administrator of the local government area. Every county should have a number of local government administrators corresponding to the number of local government areas within that county on or before for the 15th of November, 2018. The two phases of uh, the Amber Peace Plan. The emergency phase and the maintenance phase. For the emergency phase, we call on all local government areas to present a special gift to their local government areas. Five loaves of bread and two fishes. We are expecting that this gift should have been delivered to their local government areas on or before the 30th of November 2018. I also want to seize this opportunity to announce a timely come together. It is the Ambazonia Stakeholder Strategic Congress, the ASSC. It is scheduled to hold in the United States of America on the last weekend of November from Friday 30th November to Saturday the 1st of December. The program attendees will be as follows. 
all local government administrators representing their local government worldwide, all accredited country coordinators with at least 100 registered levy paying citizens on www.ambazoniagov.org. And thirdly, interested civil society leaders, bloggers, activists, members of local and international press may apply to the office of the vice president for accreditation to participate as observers only. This two-day strategic conference is for the rollout of a judicious plan for our Amazonia liberation for the year ahead. We seek to have maximum participation from every local government and every country. Therefore, all local government administrators representing LGAs and all qualified country coordinators representing nations who intend to attend the ASSC conference should submit their names to the office of the vice president on or before the 20th of November 2018 for their access badges and invitations to be prepared and dispatched. Announcing the Ambazonia Commission for Reconciliation and Negotiations, ACON. As we advance towards these challenging times, it is important for us to major on the things that bind us together and narrow out on those things that set us apart. There are many bruises and self-inflicted wounds we must seek to heal so we get to Boya sooner than later. We must not give any room to our common enemy to triumph over us. In this spirit, on behalf of all our heroes, dead and alive, I have created the Amazonia Commission for Reconciliation and Negotiations, ACON. This is also to tell world leaders that we are prepared for a negotiated settlement for either a UN organized referendum for our people only, <clears throat> or a mediated negotiation on the terms of our separation from the non-existent union with La Republic du Cameroon. This commission, therefore, will be made up of two chambers, the General Assembly and the Technical Committees. The General Assembly shall be comprised of the following members. His Excellency, President, Sisiko Ayok Tabe, and all the nine leaders in jail are ex officio members of this commission. Mancho Bibixi, a cabinet representative, two elderly statesmen, Pa Mulanjo Litumbe and Ambassador Fossil, two AGC representatives, two legal minds, two APLM representatives, one expert economist, one expert mediator, a constitutional law expert who happens to be the chair of ACON, Professor Carlson Anyangwe, two faith-based representatives, one a Christian, the other a Muslim, two representatives of the ASC, one representative from Scoop, one representative from Morisk, two Ambazonian administrators based on Ground Zero, the technical committees. There will be two technical committees of this commission. The technical committee for reconciliation amongst Ambazonians, and then the Technical Committee for Negotiations Towards the Actualization of Our Independence. Ambazonia Public Relations Commission. In order to foster our good image and the correct narrative around our story, we have also decided to create the Ambazonia Public Relations Commission 
headed by Professor J.J. Asungu. Interested and qualified Amazonians should contact the office of the president to join this very important commission and let's work. Then the Amazonia Football Soccer Federation. In preparation for our first ever international soccer friendly encounter with the nation of Kurdistan early next year, we have also created the Amazonian Football Federation and uh, with a technical team to select and train our Watana Wata national team. The nominations to these associations will be published after ratification by our Restoration Council. Fe my fellow Amazonians, it has not come to us as a surprise that our neighbors, the Republic, are incapable of organizing free and fair elections without employing the mystical rigging machinery. And this time it was rightly termed the force of experience in rigging. Experience has proven to us over 36 years of annexation by Paul Beer that La Republic du Cameroon has not changed their modus operandi. And their leaders have no vision or integrity. They know nothing about stewardship or leadership. And for over 57 years, we have tried to bring them to reason to no avail. All we have received in return is our people called rats and dogs and Biafrans, our young and old abducted, maimed, arbitrarily assassinated in cold blood in an effort to rid us of our productive generation. All we have seen is a scotch earth policy designed to bring us as a people to annihilation. But today, we have reason to say enough is enough. We will not be second class to our own God-given land, never. Even as I speak now, we have received intelligence that the octogenarian Mbivondo and his gangster regime are pl planning to take their genocide onslaught in Amazonia to a higher degree on accu with accurate monstrosity. They are planning to shut down internet and communication access from Amazonia totally so that they may freely use weapons of mass destruction on our peace-loving people on ground zero. Let it go on the records that I, the acting president of the Federal Republic of Amazonia, this 27th day or 28th day of, uh, of the 10th month of this year, 2018, I have drawn the attention of the international community to this planned and pending crush of our peace-loving people by an evil tyrant, Paul Beer. It is indeed shameful that in spite of the evil currently meted on our people, we still have some of our own as privileged house slaves pretending to romance the occupier to legitimize his invasion of our national territory. However, it comes as a surprise when we see the level of legal and intellectual dishonesty uh, be, 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 be portrayed by legal minds like Mr. Kamto Akeremuna, who dared to also call us separatists. And they suggest that we are fighting a lost cause. I dare to challenge naysayers to think again, because Southern Cameroon and Bazonia have embarked on a journey of no return. Our march to Boya is irrevocable, and we ask for no permission from illegal occupiers. History and the law lend us credence, and I want us to use this opportunity to educate journalists and commentators, reporters, and all stakeholders.
stockholders on the Southern British Cameroon's plight that we are not separatists. We are a sovereign people. You may call us pro-independent, not separatists. It is a travesty of international proportion to define the sovereign people of Southern Cameroon's Amazonia as some rebels or separatists. And I crave your indulgence, all people of honesty, to desist from assigning such insults to the proud people of a sovereign nation. Otherwise, before you call us separatists the next time, tell us when and how Southern British Cameroons and La Republic du Cameroon became one. We have never been united with French Cameroon. If there is any such treaty of union as was mandated by the United Nations in 1961, somebody should present it and I will sh shut up. But until then, the promoters and defenders of this lie and their likes should review their positions and apologize to the people of Ambazonia. Two countries of equal status came together in an experimental attempt to build a UN mandated federation on a precise legal foundation, which never happened. And today, the people of Southern British Cameroon have made it abundantly clear that they have nothing to do with this failed experiment. We have emphasized this truth time and again. And finally, on October 7, we sent a strong message to the entire world by collectively boycotting the sham elections organized by the colonial government of French Cameroon. Be it known, therefore, that whether Camto or Bia, none have received a mandate to govern our people. The interim government of the Federal Republic of Amazonia or of the Southern British Cameroons, the ones who called the very successful boycott, they remain and will remain the only legitimate authority in Amazonia. Subsequently, we will hold a truly free and fair democratic elections in Amazonia and shame the charade that is done east of the Mongo. My people, a long song is not always a sweet song. Be strong. Defend what is yours. Your culture, your family, your land is a God-given one. Nobody can take it away from you. They can try, but even Hell's army combined will not subdue the spirit of Amazonia, for our spirit is strong. God bless you, and may God bless the Federal Republic of Amazonia. Thank you.
Mr. Melody. We were each designed to be useful to one another. Giving your very best with no selfish agenda. Even if it only implies you'll be an inspiration. And this way you'll see how dreams do come true. Cause we are wiser, they are better, and we're stronger. When together, the more effective the power is meant to be, we complete each other, you see. Yeah. 